This is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Now, dear Father, lead me and guide as we study thy word today. I realize, Lord God, I recognize and I confess that I am no prophet. I am not the son of a prophet. Dear Lord God, I realize that I am just an unworthy gospel preacher. But, Father, I know that God's Spirit searcheth the deep things of God. So I ask you now to lead us and guide us as we study, and we'll give God the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I said on yesterday that one of the most popular things that anybody can do today in America is to join a church. Now, we're having a great revival of church joining. We are. We are having a great revival of religion in America. People are becoming religiously minded. Now, listen, you can say what you please. You can say what you please. Religion is becoming big business in America. Now, that's right. You can't deny it. And one of the most popular things... Now, notice, I said religion. I said religion. Now, I challenge you, my friend, to search the Bible, and you'll find that the true worshipers have always been in the minority. Now, you, you can search the Bible. I still say I'm not a prophet of gloom. I'm not. Now, if you want to know the spiritual temperature of your church, whether it's a Baptist, a Methodist, a Presbyterian, or what have you... If you want to know the spiritual temperature of your church, take it on Wednesday night or whenever you have your prayer meeting. When you have people to come out for a prayer service, that's the time to take the spiritual temperature of your church. Not at homecoming, not on Sunday morning. Millions of Americans go to church on Sunday morning that never go back to the church until the next Sunday morning. Now, we're not saved by going to church, but saved people just cannot help but go to church. They can't help it. They must go if they're born again. Now, it's popular to join a church. It's popular to be religious, and it is popular to talk religion. And some of the outstanding magazines of our country and the newspapers are giving more space to religion today than they ever have in the history of mankind. Radio stations give many hours to playing gospel hymns, and that's all right. I'm not criticizing that, brother, friend, God have mercy. I'm stating facts. I'm just stating facts. America is religious-minded. America is religiously inclined, but there's a vast difference between religion and Christianity. The Son of God had 5,000 when he broke the loaves and the fishes and fed them. But when he needs somebody to carry a cross, when he needed someone to take up his cross and finish the trip to Golgotha, Simon had to be forced to carry it. There wasn't a single solitary person that rushed up and said, let me carry that cross. One had to be forced to do it. Now listen, brother, the majority has always followed the line of least resistance, and the majority always will follow the line of least resistance, and real, true Bible Christianity is not to be found in abundance today in America nor in any other country. Now, you stick with me. Listen, listen. Don't criticize Oliver Green. If the teachings of Jesus Christ are the foundation of Christianity, then the best place I know of to find the rules, the regulation, the message of Christianity is to study the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I told you on yesterday in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, he delivered that sermon in Capernaum, in dignified Capernaum. He told the people that they must repent. In Luke 13, 3 and in Luke 13, 5, the Son of God said, Except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Now, the next verse that I want us to notice today is in the glorious Sermon on the Mount. 
Now, I know that uh, uh, people are saying today, I've heard some of the modernists on the radio, I don't listen to them unless I'm traveling. And if I'm traveling along the highway and I tune in some fella uh, that I know does not believe in the blood and does not preach the blood, then I'll listen just to see what he's saying and just to see what he's preaching. But of course, when I'm traveling is the only time I wouldn't waste time listening to a man that doesn't preach the blood atonement and salvation by grace through faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I wouldn't listen to him unless I was traveling and couldn't do anything else but ride along the road and listen. I certainly wouldn't. But now in Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount, and the modernists say that we need to get back to the Sermon on the Mount. We need to get back to the Sermon on the Mount. Well... I'd like to read all these verses, but I won't take the time today because I don't have the time. And, of course, in one month of preaching, it would be utterly impossible to discuss everything that Jesus said and preached while he was here. So we'll just hit the high spots. Now, after he said, repent, 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 and I closed the message yesterday by asking you if you had repented of your sin. Now, if you haven't, you're lost. I don't care who you are. And repentance is godly sorrow and turning from sin. You don't repent of sin and stay in it. You don't repent and stay in sin. When you repent, you turn away from sin. All right. Now, in Matthew 5, 13, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that set on a hill cannot be hid, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick that it giveth light unto all that are house. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, we're going to talk about those verses, and we may move on uh, to another verse today. We may not. I don't know. Now, first of all, ye are the salt of the earth. To whom is he speaking? To whom is he speaking? He's speaking to the disciples. He's speaking to the followers of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to say to every church member listening to my voice, every person that is affiliated with a church, you have announced by affiliating with that church that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, I didn't say you are. I said you have announced that you are. And if you are affiliated with a Baptist church, Methodist church, Holiness church, Catholic church, Lutheran church, Episcopalian church, what have you, you have announced to the world by affiliating with that church that you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you are, and if you follow the gospel of the Son of God, then you are the salt of this earth. Now, what's salt good for? Say, salt is good to preserve. It preserves. It it purifies, it cleanses, and it sweetens. You know, you can put salt on grapefruit and it makes it sweet. Now, that's a fact. I don't mean that it tastes like sugar, but I mean it takes away the sharpness, takes away the bitterness, and it makes it sweet. Now, salt is a wonderful commodity. What on earth would we do without it? Some of you precious people out there, my dear old daddy, before he died, he had high blood and he had to give up his salt. And I tell you, it was terrible. Dad said, I just as soon not go to the table. Now, some of you precious people, listening to my voice, you can't use salt. You have high blood. Maybe you have some other disease that you just cannot use salt. And I tell you, some of your food is tasteless. Is that right? Now, listen, I want to say this. If Jesus said, we, the believers, the born again, the children of God, if we are the salt of the earth, then he meant what he said. He said what he meant, and that's what we're supposed to do. How many salty Christians do you know today? Now tell me, preachers, come on, ministers of the gospel. Thank God for you. Thank God you're listening. God bless you for listening. I have some dear preachers, thank God, that believe and preach exactly what I'm preaching. They listen to this program. They write me, and I praise God for my minister friends. I do. May God bless you, brethren. But I want to ask you, dear pastors, how many salty Christians do you have? How many people in your church do you have that live a salty life? I mean by that... Their life, the very actions of their living, the words they use, the songs they sing, the places they go, the company they keep, and what they are sweetens and purifies the people and the folks with whom they come in contact. Now, we are to be salty. Now, that's what the Bible says. How many salty Christians do you know? Now, let me show you something. He says, if the salt hath lost its savor, now, that means if it's not salty anymore, if it doesn't purify, and salt does lose its savor, 
it will lose its saltiness and its purifying power. Now, Jesus said, if the salt hath lost its savor. Now, that means if you have lost your influence, you've lost your testimony, you've lost the respect of the people with whom you work. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, church member. Wait a minute, mother. Wait a minute, daddy. What about the people with whom you work? Now, listen, I know there are always critics and fault finders that will find fault with you and make fun of you and all, but I'm not talking about that. Listen, the people with whom you work, bless your heart. When they tell a dirty joke, do you smile at it? Or when they're telling a suggestive joke, do you take part in it? Or when they're gambling or playing cards at the noon hour, do you sit around and watch them? And uh, I could go on, but what's the use? What's the use? Do you get mad and plow for the handle? Do you use language that you know good and well no, a Christian should never use? And do you uh, display a haughty, hateful spirit? Now listen, if you do, God bless you. The Bible says you are good for nothing. Now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm not criticizing. So help me, God, I'm not. I'm saying this in love. I'm saying this in tenderness. I'm saying this from the bottom of a broken heart. But in some of our churches today, and I'm sorry to say, I'm afraid a good percentage of our churches today, if the pastors went to the pulpit and really told the people on Sunday morning what they ought to be told, he'd tell them that the majority of you are good for nothing. You come here on Sunday morning, sit through the Sunday morning service, and kiss God goodbye. Some of you don't even stay for Sunday school. Some of you don't even stay for, for, for preaching. You go to Sunday school, and you don't even stay for preaching. When Sunday school's over, you make a beeline to the beaches, the ballparks, and the racetracks, and the theaters, and the hills, and the hollows, and God bless you. You go to church on Sunday morning, you got your name on the roll, you put a little money in the pan, you go to Sunday school, and bid God farewell, the church goodbye, until next Sunday school time. Now, I say to you, God bless you, if you've ever been salty, you've lost the saltiness, you've lost your savor, you've lost lost your power, you've lost your testimony, you've lost everything, and so far as God's concerned, so far as the church is concerned, and so far as your pastor's concerned, you're just good for nothing. That's all. And that's what Jesus said. You'll have to get mad with him. I didn't write the Bible. Now, don't get mad with Oliver Green, God bless you. I can't help it. God told me to preach the Word, and that's what I'm doing. I'm not compromising with you. I'm not in the back-scratching business. Now, remember that, yeah? I said, if you are a believer... If you are a church member, rather, if you've united with a church, if you have joined a church, you have announced to the world that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. And if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, then the Bible says you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt hath lost its savor, it is thenceforth from that moment, the moment that the salt loses its savor, the moment that the salt loses its saltiness, it's good for nothing. Now, God have mercy. Am I a good-for-nothing Christian? Am I a good-for-nothing preacher? Have I lost my saltiness? Have I lost my savor? Am I good for nothing? God help me to ask myself. God help me. Listen, beloved, if you're guilty, don't get mad with the preacher. Don't say, I'll never listen to that bird again. Listen, beloved, if Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and if the Bible is the Word of God, and if Jesus spoke these words, God help us to hear them. God help us to hear them, and God help us to believe them. But that's not all he said. He said, ye are the light of the world. Ye are the light of the world. Ye are lights in a world. Now, Jesus said, in John 8, 12, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. But now, you see, he's gone. He's gone. He went back to the Father. Now, he's here in the Spirit, of course, indeed. But he's in my heart, yes. He's in your heart if you're saved, yes. But Jesus said, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. But now, he's gone back to the Father. He's gone back. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father make an intercession for us. Now, he said, ye are the light. Christians are the light of the world. Christians, born-again people, are the light of the world. And let me tell you something. On the job, in the home, in the community, in the shop, wherever you are, if you profess to be a follower of the Son of God, people watch every move you make. Listen, there are a lot of things that I could do and not go to hell. I could do a lot of things that I don't do and not go to hell. There's a lot of things that I don't do that I could do, 
and not lose my salvation or lose my soul to go to hell. No. I could do those things and still be saved. But, beloved, some of those things, if I did them as a minister and a Christian, then I'd be a stumbling block and people would stumble over me in the hell. That's exactly what would happen. And God forbid that I do anything and God forbid that I say anything and God forbid that I be anything that would cause my fellow man to stumble over me into the pits of the damned. God help you. You're the light of the world. Now, here's what the Bible says. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, under the bed or under the bushel, but he put it on a candlestick that it giveth light to all the house. Now, here's a command. This is a command. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Your good works. Now, dear pastors, my dear brother preachers, how many members do you have that'll work? Oh, yeah, they'll come to the homecoming, God bless you. Uh-huh. And if you're going to have a dinner on the ground, God bless you, they'll be there. Amen. Yes, sir. And they'll be there. Yes, sir. And if you're going to have some good singing, and who doesn't enjoy it? Bless your heart. Who don't? I love good quartets and trios and solos and, and uh, instrumental music. Certainly I do. I love it. it. It thrills my soul. If you're going to have a singing convention or have special music or bring in a very special uh, group, why, you'll have them. Yes, sir. They'll come from Dan to Beersheba and Beersheba back to Dan. They'll be there from far and near. Am I right? Am I right? You know I'm right. But then, bless the Lord, when you want somebody to do house-to-house -house visitation, house-to-house -house evangelism, house-to-house -house distributing of gospel tracts, and letting lights shine through the community up and down the highways and byways, then God bless you how many come. How many come? Let me tell you something. That good old Negro spiritual that we sing in the South, and maybe you sing it in the North and in the West, but I don't know. Maybe some of you have never heard it. But in the South, that good old Negro spiritual, everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. That may not be good English, but bless the Lord, it's good, sound gospel. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. No, they're not, bless your soul. There's a lot of people that can sing, God bless you, on Sunday morning, and they can go through the rituals and the programs and the rising and the sitting and the stooping and the bowing and the giving and the receiving and all of that. But my friend, they have their light, if they have any light, under a bushel. They have it under a bed. They don't have it on a candlestick, and they're not a city set on a hill. Now, Jesus preached the gospel that we are the salt of the earth, but if we've lost our savor, our saltiness, we're good for nothing. God have mercy. I don't want to be a good-for-nothing church member, do you? I don't want to be a good-for-nothing preacher. Listen. God help me and God help you to ask yourself and God help me to ask myself, am I a salty Christian? When I'm in the presence of others, do I create within them a thirst for God? Do I create a thirst for God in their hearts? Or am I just a saltless Good for nothing preacher. God help me. And then I wonder about my light. I wonder if my light is on a candlestick. Or I wonder if I have it under a bushel. The bushel of worldliness, selfishness, pride, hatefulness, stubbornness, worldliness, bushel. Where is my light? God to help me to get my light on a candlestick so that when I come in contact with men and women, boys and girls, they'll see in me the beauty of Jesus, and God help me to glorify God, and God help me to do the works that will bring glory and honor and praise unto God. Now, I won't get to say much about that, but he said, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works. Your good works. Now, you're a church member, you are a professing Christian, but what about your works? What about your works? Now, let me ask you a question. During the last week, 
during the last seven days, what have you been, what have you done, what have you said, what kind of work have you done? that brought glory to God Almighty in your community, in your home, and among the people with whom you come in contact. Now think it over, think it over. Jesus preached the gospel. Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the light of the world. Do good works so that men will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now in this age of compromise... All this lovey-dovey, everybody's good, nobody's bad, everybody's wonderful. Brother, I'm telling you, God Almighty says, if you've lost your saltiness, you're good for nothing. God help us. Now, Christian, check up. And let God check your heart. Let the Holy Spirit deal with your soul. And ask yourself the question, Am I a salty Christian? Am I a light on a candlestick? Do my works glorify God? Do my works glorify God? God help you. God help me. The checkup. Father, take this message today, Lord God, and use it to the glory of God. Save the soul that's nearest hell. Save many souls, Father. Save all the souls that are calling on you in Radio Land now. God help Christians. God help Christians. God help church members to check up and let the Lord purge out their lives and make them living examples of God's grace. Salty Christians and lights on a candlestick. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.